Hi again. In this episode, we are going to show you how to pay off a home quickly, and you're going to be shocked. It's not any way, shape, or form sending extra principal payments to the mortgage company. Did you hear that? I'm going to show you how to get out of debt two and a half to three years faster than any method of sending extra principal payments to the mortgage company. I'm Doug Andrew, author of 11 books. My very first book that was released at the turn of the century in the year 2000 became a national bestseller. It was called Missed Fortune. And uh, the very first chapter was titled uh, The $25,000 Mistake Being Made by Millions of Americans. I would say now, uh, 20 years later, it's a $100,000 mistake. I tell the story in there of one day when I met with three finance professors at a major university. They uh, said, you know, Mr. Andrew, we teach all of our advanced students in the 400 classes why uh, when they buy their first home, if they can afford the payment, to take out a 15-year amortized mortgage instead of a 30-year amortized mortgage. And I said, uh, gentlemen, there was three men, uh, your finance professors. <laughs> Why do you do that? <laughs> and they went, well, duh. <laughs> Maybe they meant Doug. I don't know. If you just bite the bullet and pay extra, uh, uh, extra principal, you pay off the house in 15 years, you'll save yourself a grundle of interest. And then you can sock away the difference into a tax deferred IRA or 401k and you'll end up with this much money. I said, gentlemen, haven't you ever taken the differential between a 15 year amortized mortgage payment of let's say this and a 30-year amortized mortgage payment, which is less, take that difference plus the tax savings. You will achieve during the first 15 years of a 30-year mortgage and don't spend it. Have a system to set it aside compounding tax-free. They said, what's tax-free? So I had to educate them about my favorite vehicle, the laser fund uh, that accumulates your money tax-free and allows you to take it out tax-free. They said, no, we've never done that math. I pulled out an HP 12C calculator and they were flabbergasted. There was enough money in 12 and a half years to totally pay off the 30 year mortgage two and a half years faster than the same money they told their students to pay off a 15 year mortgage. Not only that, uh, they had enough money to pay it off in 15 years and they had 25,000 left over. That was on a $150,000 house. If you have a $300,000 house, we're talking about 50 grand that most people just kiss down the drain. If you have a $600,000 15 year mortgage, you're kissing goodbye $100,000. I can prove it to you. So first of all, I want you to understand how money works. I've been thinking about writing a book for years titled How Money Really Works. Let me give you just a little snapshot of this. When we put our money in a bank, a credit union, or an insurance institution, uh, they just uh, benevolent uh, paying us interest. <laughs> no, okay. The last uh, 15, 20 years, many banks and credit unions have been paying us 1%. So if we passed a hat around and we, we deposited a million dollars into the bank, we're lending them our money, right? So they pay us 10,000. Now they turn around and uh, they maybe loan that back at 3% or they put it in an insurance institution to increase the liquidity, safety, and rate of return like I do. And they, maybe they earn 3%. Now, how much more is three than one? Don't say two, it's 300%. How many of you watching this would hire an employee for 10 grand if the employee made you an extra 30 grand? How many of you would buy a widget machine for 10 grand that made you an extra 30 grand? I'll do that all day long, that's 300%. But see, uh, the average on real estate on my homes in the last 40 years, I have borrowed money as high as 6% interest, sometimes even higher. Because it's tax deductible, it doesn't cost me 60, it only costs me 40 because I save the difference in tax. That's a tax deduction and I get a third of it back, so it's only really costing me four. When you borrow money at 6% deductible interest, it's a net cost of four in a 33% bracket. Does that make sense? So if it's cost me four, in my laser fund, which is where I put my serious cash, I have earned an average of 8.2% with uh, only using one strategy. I've actually made 10.07 using both strategies in this book. But let's just be conservative. If I earn eight, how much more is eight than four? Ah, oh, 100%. I would definitely hire an employee for 40 grand that made me an extra 80 grand. I'm making 100% rates of return. So folks, lately, because interest rates are so low, 
I've been borrowing money on my house or real estate, maybe as high as four and a half. I can borrow at three, which is a net cost of two, but let's say four and a half in a 33% bracket, that's a net cost of three. I turn around and I earn 9% tax-free. How much more is nine than three? 300%. Do you uh, notice something here? The banks make 300%. I make 300%. What are you making? <laughs> See, that's because people don't, don't understand how money really works. And so I've helped a lot of people get out of debt. They're smart and quick ways. The smartest and quicker way is not the, the, the best way. See, the smartest and quickest way is not any way, shape, or form sending extra principal payments to the mortgage company. So I'm going to give you an example of this to empower you. But see, there's strivers who pay interest. There are arrivers who earn interest. But the mega wealthy thrivers, they learn when it's wise to pay interest in order to make more interest and you will get out of debt faster. So let me show you how to do this and how this all works. Whenever I buy real estate or I'm trying to get out of debt, uh, it's all how we define out of debt. I define out of debt as this. When I have enough money that's liquid and safe in this pocket, so to speak, that any time I can take it out of this pocket with an electronic funds transfer or phone call and pay off all the debt in this pocket, okay? So this pocket are my assets, this is my liabilities. So as soon as I have enough money here that any time it could wash out all liabilities here, I'm out of debt, especially on my balance sheet. But a lot of people think out of debt means you physically don't owe any money. No. I like to have liquidity, I like to have safety of principle and earn predictable rates of return and real estate equity fails all three of those tests of a prudent investment. So let me show you with this picture and goblet what I'm talking about. Let's say that uh, this goblet represents my house and I've not put my first dollar of liquid cash into it. Let's say it's worth a hundred thousand just to be simple. Okay. So when I fill in out my balance sheet, my statement of net worth, I list my house as an asset. Okay. So this is worth a hundred thousand. It's an asset. When I go to the bank to borrow money, it's an asset. Let's say I have a hundred thousand dollars of liquid cash in the bank or credit union, better yet in an insurance company in a laser fund earning 10% like I've been earning. I've been averaging 10.07% for the last 25 years. So I have a hundred thousand of liquid cash. This is also an asset. What do I have in total assets? 200,000. Now it may be true, that I have 200,000 of assets minus a $100,000 mortgage liability on the house for a net worth of 100,000, day one. Day two forward, it's much greater if you keep them separated. Because what happens if you go in and you pay a 20% down payment, okay? What happens if you uh, uh, take all the equity from your former house that you sold and you put it into the new house because you thought lower mortgages meant lower costs because nobody taught you about opportunity cost. What happens if you pay cash for your house or pay it off? What did you just do to your assets? You just took one $100,000 asset, the property, and another $100,000 asset, your cash, and you just combine them together into one $100,000 asset. You just cut them in what happens if you separate 80% or 100% of that equity and put it over here? What did you just do to your assets? You just increased them by as much as double. Let's say this house appreciates this year 5%. What is this worth at the end of the year? 105. Oh, let's increase the rate of return by hurrying and paying it off. So we put all of our money in that house and now it goes up 5%. Now what is it worth? 105. How come the same answer? Because real estate equity, home equity, always has the same rate of return. Zero. Zip. Nada. See, we have this myth conception that because the house is appreciating or the debt is reducing that equity has a rate of return. The rate of return on equity is always zero. The only way you give equity a chance to earn a rate of return, the house is going to go up in value or down in value, regardless of whether it's full of cash, empty of cash, mortgage to the hilt or free and clear has nothing to do with how much equity is in there. But when I separate it, I give it the ability to earn a rate of return. Let's say I earn 10% this year. 
in my laser fund. What's this worth at the end of the year? 110,000. <gasps> I made 10 grand here and five grand here for a total of 15. How much better is 15 than five? 300%, is that what smart people do? But, but there's a mortgage there. Is that good or bad? If I borrowed money at 6% deductible interest, it's a net cost of four. I made 15,000 minus 4,000. That is a net profit of 11,000. Would you hire an employee for 4,000 that made you an extra 11,000, okay, or 15,000? Folks, this is how the wealthy get wel more wealthy. This is how the rich get richer and the poor get poor. They don't understand how money works. Because of this concept of compound interest tax-free, simple interest tax deductible, you'll have enough money in this goblet, the laser fund is what I use, to totally pay off this mortgage in two and a half or three years faster of a timetable than giving the money to the mortgage company. And uh, I don't physically do it, but I am out of debt on my balance sheet much faster by using this concept. It's all how to become your own banker. So I hope you're getting it. Let me just say one more thing about this. What if this house goes down in value next year? 10%. People go, oh yeah, I don't want to owe more than my house is worth. Who's in control? You or the mortgage company. See, if you had your equity in the property, you just had a guaranteed loss. But if you separate it and your house goes down in value 10%, did you lose? No, you made 10% over here. And as I often say, Will Rogers once said, people get more concerned about the return of their money instead of the return on their money. So whether your house goes up in value or down in value, I keep it separated to maintain liquidity so I can access the money. If I get laid off or I lose my job, I can't borrow it out of the house without proving to the mortgage company there's a need why I should have it. When you need it the worst, it's the hardest to get. I have safety of principle so that if this goes down in value, I don't lose because it's already over here. Do you know in 2008, my house was appraised for a million five hundred thousand dollars. I refinanced it to a hundred percent loan to value. The next year, it was only worth a million one. People went, neener, 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 Mr. Andrew. Uh, you're underwater. You owe more than your house is worth. Did I care? I had 400,000 that I was earning 100% more than what I was paying. I was in control. I had liquidity. I had safety. I had rates of return 100% greater than the mortgage. I made my mortgage payments. People who had their money tied up in their houses and they lost their jobs in that recession, they lost their house. Folks, that is the power behind getting out of debt the smart way by not sending extra principal payments to the mortgage company. You keep it compounding tax-free over here. Watch this episode up here to understand how this all comes together, the big secret of how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer.